In this short video, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to put together your very first site analysis. Now we start a project with two essential ingredients. We have the brief or the program, which is to say the purpose to which the building is going to be put and the site or the context within which the structure will be located. Analysis and response to the brief leads to architectural concepts and we look at that in another video. But equally, site analysis leads to architectural concepts, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. The aim is to bring these two sources of concepts together so that they resolve themselves into one satisfactory structure. When we finally get out into professional practice, the site analysis can be a very involved operation, and it might include doing research into such complex things as zoning, building limitations, building area limitations, building height limitations, access to public services and utilities, and all of that kind of thing. But to get things started, we're going to avoid all of this complication. For now, we'll just focus on that part of the site analysis that leads to what we might call the aesthetic response or the design response. Now, I'm sure you can imagine how, if your project is located on a site that has fantastic views, those views are going to affect how you go about designing your building. And it might not just be the views, you might want to orientate your building toward the sun, or perhaps you might want to shade parts of your building from the sunlight, let's say in the middle of the summer, just to keep the building cooler. Now, the more you think about it, the more you're going to realize that there are all sorts of things that you're going to find at the site, which may influence your thinking about your design. In my experience, you're best off going to your site visit armed with a checklist and also with a camera. Now, as it happens, I've put a checklist together. It's a very basic checklist. When you see it, you're going to think it's quite detailed, but it's actually very basic. And you'll find the link to that checklist below the video here. So to demonstrate how a site analysis might actually work in practice, I'm going to pretend that a client has asked me to design a small meditation space for them. That is a single room where they can go and sit in peace and quiet and reflect on life. Now the site they have in mind happens to be my front garden, which is right outside my window here, which happens to be very beautiful because it happens to be located on a lake here in County Clare. So I'm going to arrive out of my site, with my checklist and work my way through the list of questions that I put together on the checklist, giving myself plenty of time to think carefully about each issue. So I'm going to start off with the first set of questions on my list, which are to do with sun exposure and shadows. And then I start making my notes. In the section that I call views, now I could easily fall into the trap of saying, yes, this site has fantastic views, but this isn't enough. I won't be making a building entirely of glass. In other words, I'm not going to walk into this glass building and have all of the views as if it's some kind of panorama. Some parts of the fabric will be, they're going to turn out to be opaque, for example, the roof. So that means that I'm going to have to make some decisions about these views. If I can't have all of the views, then which views do I want to hold on to? The approach to this particular site is a little special. I walk along a very secluded country lane. And when I arrive at the site, the view of the lake is suddenly revealed to me, and it's a very nice experience. Now, as it happens, all sorts of plants and animals live in and around this site. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time making notes on this topic. I'll also take lots of photographs and make a note of my site plan of where the pics are taken from and what they're taken of. Back at the drawing board, I'm going to tease out a few different ideas, and it might go just a little bit like this. I might, for example, be taken by something that you might not think is so obvious, but I happen to like these reeds. They've a beautiful color and texture, and they look wonderful reflected in the water. So I could imagine building my meditation space, let's say at the water's edge, and it might be partially concealed by the reeds and at the same time might also actually blend in with the reeds. Now how it's going to do this, I don't really know. Maybe just, maybe the glass reflects the reeds back in themselves, which would be kind of nice. So that's one idea. 
But sometimes your response to the site might be to almost take a kind of a, an attitude toward it, more like a, a sort of a dialogue, let's say. The lake here, of course, is pretty much dead flat because we're in the world of the horizontal when we're in the world of the lakes. And this might suggest that the site is crying out for maybe a little bit of a tower, perhaps sitting in the lake with the client's meditation space right at the very top. As it happens, I'm still really interested in this idea of approach. I could develop a strategy where my intervention greets you as you arrive on the site and then it sort of leads you down to the view of the lake. Now, another way to address the idea of approach might be to use my intervention to conceal the view of the lake. I only get to enjoy the view when I enter the space and the world of the view is the private world of meditation. I kind of like this idea. My approach to doing a site analysis might be a little bit different from what you'll hear from other tutors and that I pretty much insist that on the A1 presentation sheet of your site analysis, you actually include a, some form of conclusion uh, or maybe even you might call it a concept. Otherwise, what tends to happen is that the student goes to the site and they collect an awful lot of data, but then they don't use it for anything at all. It just becomes an exercise. They go through the motions. And the way to avoid this is to insist, at least in first and second year, that the student do the exercise on the site and then show that diagram, which indicates the conclusion that they've come to, which they'll then use as part of the design process. All right. In this video, we had a look at how you actually carry out the site analysis when you go to the site and in the next video we'll look at how all of this material gets presented on an A1 sheet.